Hi, welcome to Learn Rosin Now, a weekly video series I'm putting together to help um, explore the Rosin compiler API and show you how you can build analyzers, extensions, and other tools using Rosin. Um, my name's Josh, and I've been using Rosin for about three years now. Um, I use it in my everyday work to build developer tools that, that help make developers more productive, and I think a lot of people um, will find this tool really cool. So today's episode, we're going to focus on uh, getting set, getting started and getting set up and all the tools that you're going to need um, sort of to get off the ground. So to start, you can, you can get everything from within Visual Studio. You just go File, New Project, and then under uh, C Sharp Extensibility, there's this option to download the .NET Compiler Platform SDK. So we can go ahead and create this project. And what we'll see is it really doesn't have much in it other than uh, this link to uh, go download all the tools. So you can click this um, and it installs a, a little extension to Visual Studio with everything that you're going to need, um, templates for analyzers and uh, the syntax tree visualizer. So what we'll do is we'll look at uh, how Roslyn treats um, a very simple C Sharp program. And we'll do that by adding um, a basic class. I just want a class. Oh, not new project. Uh, we want um, add new item. And we'll just add a class to our project. And we'll, we'll strip out pretty much everything except for um, the namespace here. And, you know, to most programmers, we, we treat our, our source code as, you know, a giant string. But what's happening under the hood is Roslyn is taking the string, turning it into a tree, um, and that's the representation you're going to be uh, interacting with source code most of the time is, is this, this syntax tree representation. Um, and, the, and the Roslyn team has released a really cool tool called the Syntax Tree Visualizer um, you can, that sort of shows us what this looks like. And you can go view other windows, Syntax Visualizer, once you've installed the tools. So right away we get this window. We can just start clicking around on this namespace, on this class. And, and what happens is we can see that this, class, this word class1 is an identifier token that's found within a class declaration that's found within a namespace declaration. And, and this is how Roslyn sees source code, and this is how we're going to be dealing with it um, when, we, when we build tools that use Roslyn. Um, we can go one step further, and we can right-click uh, this compilation unit and go view directed syntax graph. And what we'll get here is a nice uh, little DGML diagram of, of that same tree. So we've got our namespace declaration and our class declaration. And you'll notice that these nodes are, are different colors, and that's not accidental. The, the blue nodes here represent what are considered syntax nodes, and they're sort of um, higher level concepts within the, the C-sharp grammar that, that can be broken down into smaller pieces. So you've got something like this, this qualified name that consists of an identifier name, download the dot, another identifier name, uh, .NET Compiler Platform SDK. And that, that's essentially a syntax node in a nutshell, something that can be broken down into smaller pieces. Next, we've got the, uh, these green nodes here, and they're called syntax tokens. And they're sort of the atoms, the, the fundamental units of the syntax tree. They can't be broken down into smaller pieces. So you can't break a dot or a curly brace into smaller pieces, and you can't break the word namespace into anything smaller. They're, they're the fundamental units of our tree. And then finally, uh, we've got sort of the terminals here, um, the white and gray nodes. And these are considered trivia. So these are all the white space, the comments, the, you know, the, the if defs, um, all this stuff that, with, with the exception of if def, that, that isn't um, relevant to uh, compilation. So you could get rid of all the white space in the comments and, and your program would, would run the same. They're there sort of for, you know, people's convenience, for our convenience when we read source code. Um, and, and it's actually important that, that the trivia is represented in these trees. Um, Roslyn syntax trees are, are what's called full fidelity, which means whatever source code you parse in, um, you'll build a tree up. And if you call dot two string on that tree, you'll get the exact same source code out again. And this is uh, really convenient when you're, you're rewriting someone else's source code. You don't want to strip out all their comments or their white space or, or shift things around accidentally. So, so that's sort of um, 
the, the most important tool, this, this syntax tree visualizer, you're going to be using that a lot um, as we, we try to explore Roslyn and, and figure out how to build tools that, that manipulate or analyze source code. Um, but another really useful tool is called um, Source Browser. And you can get there by going source.roslyn.io. Um, this is a, a tool built by an engineer on Roslyn um, called, named uh, Kirill Osinkov. And it's recently been open source, so you can you can build a, a similar tool for your own private repository if you want. Um, and what this tool does is it takes all the source code and it creates a hyperlinked HTML that's that's fully searchable. So as an example, we can go syntax node, for example, and we can see that there's a class called syntax node, and it's defined in a couple different places. And you know we can start clicking on these things. And we can see all the places where code is used, or we can see um, all the references to this this private field parent. Um, and it, this really becomes useful when you're you're looking at public methods that you're kind of wondering like how do I use this this language? Like how does C sharp use this? Well, now you can just click on it, and you get all these examples of how uh, it's used within the Roslyn source code, and it makes it really easy to you know get small code examples and figure out how different methods are used, um, what their parameters are, how those parameters are generated and whatnot. Um, so that, that's sort of the, the two fundamental tools there. Um, in our next episode, we'll start actually getting into source code and um, analyzing a syntax tree and, and picking it apart. Thanks for watching and, and I'll catch you next time.